No trading, no combat skills. Welcome back to Let's Build a Level 3 Iron Man Skiller. Hello and welcome back to the Level 3 Iron Man Skiller progress series. In the last episode, if you remember, we were able to unlock two massive unlocks for this account. That being Fossil Island, which provides a lot of Slayer experience through experience lamps later on, as well as a bunch of passive skilling activities. And then also Guthic's Rest, which will be extremely important for all combat encounters that we have going forward. In this episode, I'd love to get another very crucial unlock for us, and that being the Rings of Recoil. At this point, the pull had passed and the update had been released, so that I can actually get Rings of Recoil on a level 3 Iron Man Skiller from Magpie Implings. That'll be our focus later on, but we do have a couple other unlocks that I want to go ahead and get in the meantime. And the very first thing that I'd like to do is actually complete building the Fossil Island Camp. So in order to do this, you need a few construction levels, and I went ahead and just got 30 construction here. Then I headed off to the Fossil Island Camp where I went and built all of the individual components that you need to complete it. And once you do that, you can claim five free small fossils from this apprentice here. The nice thing about these five small fossils is it's the exact number you need to complete one small fossil display at the Varrock Museum, which awards you with one 2000 experience lamp. This lamp does require level 20 in a skill, so make sure you have that requirement before you get it, but thankfully I have it. And this is actually the first step to getting another critical unlock for this account, which is level 30 Slayer. <laughs> So I've kind of been repeating myself a lot over the course of this series, but I didn't want to do any easy achievement diaries until I actually had 30 Slayer. And that's because the experience lamps that you get from the achievement diaries themselves require level 30 to be used. And of course I want all of my experience lamps to go into Slayer. So I figured now that I'm really close and I've claimed most of the easy to get experience before level 30, it's time to actually just sit down and crack out level 30 Slayer so I can do those easy achievement diaries. And we can do that through fossil cleaning at the Varrock Museum. Yep, the same task that you do to unlock the Bon Voyage quest and the kudos in the Varrock Museum can actually be repeated and has a very small chance to give you a 500 experience lamp that can be used in every skill. This lamp does require level 10 to be used, so you probably don't want to do it before you get level 10 in your desired skill but obviously I've very much passed that requirement already. Now these lamps are really rare and you can only really expect about four to eight per hour, depending on your luck, averaging out around 3K experience per hour, which is really slow. However, I only really need about two and a half thousand experience more to get level 30 in Slayer, so this is only going to take me about an hour. That is, unless I get insanely lucky with my first inventory of artifacts and get three lamps in one inventory. The chances of this are really, really rare, but I was really happy to get it done. After that, it did only take me about 15 more minutes to get two more lamps and that was 30 Slayer achieved. It actually went really well, and I can repeat this task at any time to get additional Slayer experience if I need to. However, I don't think there's any particular reason I'll need to return, as I'll be getting most of my other Slayer experience from other activities. I don't really need to come back here at any point, unless I actually truly want to max Slayer, which I don't think is going to be in the goals of this account. Also, in addition to that, in a recent news post, Jagex mentioned that they might be pulling a true melee splash weapon, which would make training Slayer on a level 3 account far, far more easy. I'll get more into that in the future if that pull question ever does come to happen, but just know that the Varrock Museum might be made obsolete if that does get pulled and pass. So after I finished up the Varrock Museum, the next thing I did was obviously go and complete the Artie Easy Diary, as I've been desiring this cape for basically since the start of this account. The free teleport it gives you to the Ardoin Monastery is such a strategic location to get to so many different things that it's just incredibly nice to have, particularly on an Iron Man. I can turn in my cats a lot easier, I can get to the Ardoin Farming Patch a lot easier, I can get to the Fishing Trawler a lot easier if the minigame teleport is on cooldown. It's just an incredible item to have overall. And then obviously you know that we're going to use that lamp on Slayer, which gives us a nice level. It's two and a half thousand experience for the Easy Diaries, which isn't a ton, but every little bit helps obviously. So now that I had that out of the way, I did want to get another really nice teleportation quality of life upgrade, and that's the Ring of the Elements. I've mentioned this ring a couple times before, but it gives you the ability to teleport to any of the four elemental altars, which are all in very nice locations for me. 
Specifically, the Earth Altar is the most useful as it is extremely close to both the dig site for birdhouse runs and also the balloon system to get around the rest of the map as well. The downside of this Ring of the Elements, it is quite a grind to get, so let's go ahead and get that started. The first thing that we're going to do is actually complete the Into the Abyss mini quest, which gives you nine runecrafting off the bat. This is really nice to do as you don't have to do any manual runecrafting and you'll want to do this anyway to get access to the abyss. It's also a prereq for a lot of things down the road. It does drop you off one level short of starting the Temple of the Eye quest, which does unlock the Guardians of the Rift minigame for the Ring of the Elements, but I was able to very quickly get level 10 just by crafting a few air runes south of Falador. With 10 runecrafting, then I was able to complete the Temple of the Eye quest, which is really straightforward and easy on a level 3. Contrary to popular belief, you don't actually need to enter the abyss on your own in survive the creatures on the outer ring. There is a free teleport to the inner ring for the quest, which is really nice, makes it really safe to do on a level three. And then with that out of the way, we can finally begin the actual grind at Guardians of the Rift. I haven't done any runecrafting on this account yet, so it'll be interesting to see how high we get in order to actually get the Ring of the Elements. Now the Ring of the Elements costs 400 Abyssal Pearls from the reward shop here, and you get just over two Abyssal Pearls on average per search in the Rift. So I'm going to go for 200 searches before I actually redeem any in order to see if we have enough to get the Ring of the Elements just from one straight grind. Now runecrafting is actually not that useful for me. It's very difficult to train conventionally that is actually just making runes, except for Zaya runecrafting, which I'll get into at a future date. And I do get some runes from the Guardians of the Rift, but I don't need them. There's very few uses for runes for me because obviously I can't train or use the magic skill. One of the very few uses of runes is actually to charge up the Ring of the Elements, which takes a law rune and one of each of the elemental runes per charge. So that'll be primarily where my runes go, both crafting in the minigame and also from the reward searches after. I don't really have a goal for runecrafting level either. At some point, it would be nice to get it up really high, even to 77 so I could start, say, runecrafting, but it's not a primary goal and runecrafting doesn't really serve a lot of purpose anyway, so it's really just total levels at the end of the day. And in the very, very long run, I do want to complete the rewards from the Guardians of the Rift minigame including the vestment robes that give you more runes. Even though they're not particularly useful for the account, they'll be a really nice trophy item. Plus, I also just kind of want to get all the rewards from all the skilling minigames. It feels thematically appropriate for a level 3 Iron Man skiller. The actual Guardians of the Rift minigame is pretty fun, I found. It was really easy to get into, even though I thought it was complex from the outset. I find the flow of the minigame to be pretty good. I like the fact that you get some AFK time at the beginning of each round and then it's active play time from then on. There's some interesting mechanics that you have to follow and overall I think it's a really good time. But one thing I did notice very early on is I'm not actually allowed to craft cosmic runes until I complete Lost City. So I wanted to go ahead and give that an attempt. So now how I would have completed Lost City on my normie skiller ages ago was actually just bring a main account down to the Lost City dungeon, kill zombies until it got a bronze axe and then trade that over. Now for an Iron Man, I don't actually have the ability to trade the axe over, so I need to get kill credit on the zombie for the skiller account, and my theory for how to do that was to do one true damage with dynamite and then recoil it down on the main account, but unfortunately the game is smart enough to know that the main account helped with the recoil damage and it does not give kill credit to the Iron Man. So my going theory now is that I'll have to get really lucky with poison on the zombie and also with the axe, which is only a 1 in 2.5. So this is going to take a lot of dynamite and a lot of attempts. In addition to that, in order to get max accuracy in the dungeon, I need to bring the components for a bronze crossbow and craft them while I'm on the island. So it's gonna take a lot of preparation to actually get this done. Ironically, once I have the ax, the actual tree spirit kill will be a lot easier. There are some other potential methods to investigate as well to get an ax. The craziest of which, and the one that was pretty standard for Iron Man skillers before Poison Dynamite and Rings of Recoil, is to actually stack the easy caskets until you have a shot of getting a Black Axe from them, which is about a 1 in 36 chance. You can then use the Black Axe that you got to chop the tree, and then kill the Tree Spirit. This will all have to be put off until I have a lot more Poison Dynamite though, or easy clues, or something to give this a shot. I'm not too upset about not having access to the cosmic runes. It's not too huge of a deal to keep up the catalytic points inside Guardians of the Rift anyway, so it should hopefully not be too big of a deal. Keeping up my farm runs, I actually got a genie lamp on the way to the farming guild, and that gave me 32 Slayer, which is a pretty notable level. 
as it unlocks Mogers. Mogers actually drop a useful item for my account, which is flippers, which allow you to swim underwater quickly, as well as the Moger hat, which is a trophy item. At some point, I will be going for both of these, but it won't be for a while, as Mogers are actually not poisonable, so I'll need to stack up a lot of recoils or poison dynamite to actually get these drops, but that'll be really cool to have someday. And then during my farm run, yep, we got the farming pet on giant seaweed. <laughs> this is incredible. The second pet on this account already, and I haven't even really been trying to hunt for the pets. In addition to that, the farming pet is one of the rare, more rare ones, but also I'm still growing cats, so I can't quite show it off yet, but it's nice to know we'll have two pets in the future to show off and that'll be really cool. The pet luck on this account has been great so far. And then quickly thereafter, I got 74 farming, which allows me to plant the highest tier of plants at the tithe farm. I was waiting to go back to tithe farm until I got this level to get the most efficiency out of actually gaining the points for the unlocks I still wanna get there. But at this point now, tithe farm buffs have been announced to be pulled in poll number 79. So I'm gonna hold off on going there until we figure out what's going to happen with that poll. If it passes, I'll be able to get 35 points per 100 fruit turned in versus 26, so I think it makes a lot of sense to hold off. So I think it took around 15 hours to get my 200 searches at Guardians of the Rift, which went pretty quick. It really wasn't too bad. I wasn't using pouches because I didn't want to waste any pearls on repairing them. Obviously, I can't repair them the conventional way. I actually have to pay one pearl each time to repair them. But even with that, it was still a pretty decent grind. So I actually wound up with 65 runecrafting, which actually required me to go a few searches above 200 in order to get. And that's just to make sure I got the most death runes possible from actually searching the reward rift. And then passively, I got 50 mining and 50 crafting as well, which is really cool. The passive gains you get from this minigame are great. Unfortunately, however, from all of the 200 searches, I didn't get a single unique reward. No lantern, no abyssal needle. However, I did get the additional rune pouches I need, which is the large and giant rune pouch, which will come in handy when I actually start using those in the minigame. I did get a couple of the intricate pouches as well, which I opened, and one of them actually contained an experience lamp. And this is a normal genie experience lamp. It gives 10 times your skill level and experience in the skill. So it's not incredibly useful, but a little bit of extra experience is nice. It's also really rare, so it's not really sustainable to farm for Slayer experience. Thankfully, the 200 searches did give me enough pearls that I was able to purchase the Ring of the Elements and also still had about 100 pearls left over, which will be really nice for those pouch repairs whenever I come back to Guardians of the Rift. And the runes that I got from these searches also gave me enough charges to have 1,500 teleports in my Ring of the Elements, which is going to take a long time to run out. The rest of the runes total up to a good amount of money that I'll be able to sell in the future as well whenever I'm in need of money. Overall, this grind was incredibly worth doing, and I kind of wish I would have done it sooner considering the easy requirements and how useful the Ring of the Elements will be going forward. Then, while editing one of the last videos you saw, I got that 70 woodcutting. Not a major unlock or anything, but we're on that way to the 75 woodcutting, which will unlock the final balloon route by giving me access to magic logs. At this point, I was feeling like taking a break from my planned path, so I went ahead and spent a couple hours and got 100 more Tampros reward permits. Unfortunately, this did not give me any uniques and really not a lot of good loot at all. The fish, of course, is always useful, but the caskets gave me pretty crap loot and there was really nothing notable to say about it. I feel like I'll return to Tempros from time to time just to do an extra 100 reward permits here and there because I do want those uniques. Went ahead and cooked that Tempros fish and got 63 cooking as well as 63 fishing from actually getting the permits. And it's really nice to know that I haven't really focused on training, fishing or cooking at all, just doing Tempros for other reasons. And they're already level 63. I love when skills level themselves passively. So finally, at this point, recoils from magpies were released and I had successfully put off getting 65 Hunter long enough that the update came out and I did not even have the Hunter level to get Magpies. Birdhouses helped, but with how hard it was to do them before the Ring of the Elements, I was only around 50 Hunter. So I went ahead and prioritized that goal immediately to get 65 Hunter for the Magpie Implings. And we started with Orange Salamanders but I quickly realized that falconry is actually faster in the mid 50s, so I went there instead. Finally, we finished up at Red Salamanders at level 59 to level 65, so I can finally catch those magpie implings. Thankfully, Hunter in the middle levels is actually not too bad to train. It's pretty quick. From 65 on though, I'm hoping I can get most of my experience passively from birdhouses, though we'll see how that goes, because I do want to get 83 before too long so I can get those glory amulets from dragon implings. With 65 Hunter in tow, I wasted no time and I went immediately to Piro Piro 
arrow to begin hunting for nature and magpie implings. So this is where I used a method that might be frowned upon by uh, some Iron Man purists out there, and I used my main to cast Dark Lure on the rare implings to make it a lot easier to catch on my actual skiller Iron Man. Jagex has not taken an official stance on this technique yet, and it's been used by other YouTubers in the past, so I feel like it's pretty safe to use, even though it might be against the spirit of Iron Man mode. But it just makes catching the implings so much incredibly more easy and faster, so I definitely wanted to take advantage of it. So what I started doing was just having my main account follow me around and walking in a circle around the entire area. As without going in depth into how rare impling spawning works in Pira Piro, there are a number of spawns that can only spawn nature and magpie implings, and then two spawns that can spawn higher than that. So I felt like it was worth going around circles in one world to actually look for nature and magpie implings more often versus camping the actual rare impling spawns. But I quickly realized that this is actually not the case. It's a lot better to actually just camp one of the corners across multiple worlds. So I wound up doing that later on, but for this first trip, I was just circling the entire crop circle looking for those rare implings in one world. Now this is actually where I made a huge mistake. Nature implings are incredibly useful for those belladonna seeds, and I slept on them way too long. I can actually get about 10 belladonna seeds per hour with this method, which believe it or not is faster than any other method that I have. Farming contracts are passive, and pickpocketing master farmers is only a two to four per hour. And the other really nice thing is you basically are getting these while looking for magpie implings anyway, so it's kind of passive. You need to catch the nature implings to encourage magpie implings to spawn, so you're going to get them anyway. Now my first trip of hunting implings was incredibly successful. I got two rings of recoil and the amulet of power drop from the magpies in the first set. Now the amulet of power is an incredible mid-step on the way to the amulet of glory. It gives plus seven accuracy in all styles, which will help my poison dynamite a lot. And of course, I'm so excited to have some Rings of Recall on the account. So unfortunately, even with all the progress we've made so far this episode, that is where I need to leave things off. The actual episodes that you're seeing now are very close to caught up to where I actually am in game. So unfortunately, the episodes will likely begin to slow down a little bit from here. I'm beginning to hit some longer grinds and it just won't be possible to put the episodes out quite as frequently as I want to keep each episode with a significant amount of progress for you. But nonetheless, I'm still working on this account, still having a blast, and there's a lot of cool things for us to accomplish going into the future. And before we go, of course, we can't leave without thanking the members who have joined the channel so far. Your support means so much to me, so thank you for joining. And then of course, a double huge thank you to those members who have joined at that top tier, Kitty Line, Mad Hatter, and Peepo Time. Thank you again for watching, take care, and I'll see you in the next one.